Hi guys, so for this video, I'm going to cover all the new advanced graphics settings that Epic recently added to the game. Now, in case you have no idea what I'm talking about, Epic just partnered up with Nvidia, one of the biggest graphic card producers in the world. I believe they had been working together previously, but we did not see any byproducts from it until this week. In total, Epic added 10 new settings to make your game look and feel better. These include the new Nvidia Reflex Mode, DLSS, and RTX Ray Tracing. I'm gonna run through all of them because I know a lot of you guys are confused, and I'm also gonna to share some secret tips to boost your FPS and to reduce your input delay. I promise you right now you have not seen this trick before. So now that I got you all excited, let's get into the good stuff. Like I was just saying before, all the new advanced graphics settings are straight from Nvidia. They're part of the new 30 series that they just released, as well as the upcoming release of their 360Hz monitor. You know your boy Jarian's gonna get on that. As a result of this partnership, these settings are not available for everyone on PC. They're strictly for those of you with up-to-date Nvidia graphics cards. That means all you gamers with AMD GPUs, or who are on console or Switch, you guys are unfortunately out of luck. Can I get a feels bad man in the comments? But Jarian, what if I don't know what graphics card? I have. Don't you worry, little Timmy, I got you covered. All you gotta do is be on your home screen. You guys know I'm a Knicks fan. Then press Windows and R. You'll get this little run box that will come up. And like I have right here, you wanna type in DX Diag. Press OK. And you should get the DirectX Diagnostic Tool. The default page is System. You wanna go to Display 1. This is my second monitor, but it tells me what graphics card I have. Name NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070 Ti. I'm upgrading soon. Do do not make fun of me. As long as the name says NVIDIA and it's above a GeForce GTX 950, you are good to go. Now let's get into how to get the new settings and everything you need to do to set them up. So let's say that you have a 20 series, a 10 series like me. The next thing we need to do is update our drivers. For that, click on your GeForce Experience app. Mine is right here. You should have it downloaded. I'll show you a different way if you do not. This is what mine looks like. I only have Fortnite downloaded since I'm a nerd neck. You want to go to the top next to your your home button and click drivers. Then you want to install the latest driver that was released on September 17th. I've actually held out on updating it for you guys, so consider yourselves lucky. You just want to do the express installation. It'll say preparing to install, and after about 5 minutes or so, it should be installed. The other way you can update your drivers if you do not have this app is to simply search up NVIDIA drivers on Google, and then go to the first link from NVIDIA.com. Once you get here, you're going to have to put in the criteria for your graphics card. We just looked it up, so mine is the GeForce 10 series, game ready driver, language, whichever you speak. And search it up. This is the same exact driver that we updated through the app. You could even see 456.38. You want to press download. Press OK to extract it from the folder. Right here it checks your system. Press agree. And then it's the same exact thing that I did through the GeForce experience, except this time it's through the Nvidia installer. The last and final thing you need to do to see these settings is to go down to your Windows Cortana search at the bottom left. Type in Windows update. Check for updates, system settings, and just click check for updates. I'm already updated. I believe I updated yesterday. But if you do not update your windows, you are not going to see the settings. Even if your drivers are updated, you need to make sure your windows is updated as well. Once you do those two, or I guess three things, you should be able to come into your settings, scroll down on the first page, the video settings, and under advanced graphics settings, see the three or four new ones. I only have three because I do not have an RTX graphics card, but I still do have ray tracing. You guys all should see this even you AMD users. Feels bad for you guys. Starting at the top of the new advanced graphics settings, we have latency markers. All Epic tells you about them is that they're needed for the latency debug HUD and that you also need an Nvidia graphics card as well as the latest drivers to use it. See how I got you covered? I would personally recommend turning latency markers off as you play, but at the same time, I do recommend turning it on when you try out new settings in creative. And I'll show you what I mean right now. The very cool thing about these latency markers is that if you go and enable it, turn it on, and then you come up to the third setting at the top, the game UI or the HUD setting, you can enable what's called latency debug stats, turn that on, and now you get to see the total latency in your game. You see in the top left, it says total, game, render, driver, OSQ, GPU, that's telling me the latency, otherwise known as your input delay for your game. So you can see, as I start to build, it gets a little higher because my game is rendering more things. In total right now, it says there's about five, maybe five and a half milliseconds of input delay. Let's see if I build, if I crank. It's going up to six, I saw. 
The highest it got to is six. Not too bad. Let me know what you guys get. We'll see who in the comments has the most responsive game. I bet Booga on his 360 hertz monitor and his RTX 3080 has got to be so low. What I also wanted to add in was that if you go back into your settings and you want to try something new out, maybe effects on Epic, I'll apply it and we'll now see how much more my input delay is. Oh my gosh! Look how much more delay there is. I know five milliseconds is not a lot, but the fact that you can see it now is insane. What if I crank all of this up? <laughs> Oh wow, it didn't go up that much. You can see the line is a lot higher up. I believe that's your render queue, aka how much your game is rendering each second. That's crazy though, because you wouldn't really notice that other than your FPS. And you can see how much worse my FPS is. I'm at 150. Then when I come back and I change everything to low, not only am I at 240 FPS, but I take off about 10 or so milliseconds of response time. That is insane. I know this does not take into account your response time of your mouse, of your actual PC, of your monitor. Even still, I think it is a pretty cool way to test out new settings and just to see how responsive your game truly is. 5 milliseconds. Next one is the big setting, NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency Mode. This is the setting that's really going to reduce your input delay that we just looked at. Straight from the in-game description, NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency reduces latency or input delay in GPU-bound scenarios. NVIDIA further adds on their website, The Reflex SDK allows game developers to implement a low latency mode that aligns game engine work to complete just-in-time rendering, eliminating the GPU render queue, and reducing CPU back pressure in GPU-bound scenarios. I know that's a Lot, but I will explain it. This NVIDIA reflex setting in game comes with three different modes. You have off, on, and then on plus boost. The difference between boost and on plus boost is that on plus boost not only enables NVIDIA reflex mode, but it also provides a boost feature that really improves your in-game performance. To get more specific and nerdy, this feature overrides the power saving feature in your GPU to allow the GPU clocks to stay high when heavily CPU bound. Notice how I said the on plus boost is for CPU bound scenarios and the normal on or NVIDIA Reflex only is for GPU bound scenarios, that is the distinction that we need to make our decision. You see, Fortnite is extremely CPU heavy. As a result, most people, including me, will be CPU bound, meaning on plus boost is your best option. We're not just done there though. You really didn't think your boy Papa Jarian did not have something up his sleeve? On top of enabling on plus boost, there's a few different settings that you can change to make it work even better. The first is going to be in our NVIDIA control panel, so right click on your desktop, go to NVIDIA control panel. Everyone watching should have this because we're all NVIDIA users. Then on the top left, go to adjust image settings with preview and click the use the advanced 3D image settings option. From there, go back to the top left and click manage 3D settings and scroll down under global settings all the way to power management mode. You want this option to be on prefer maximum performance. You do not want optimal power or adaptive, prefer maximum performance. On top of that, even though this does not matter as much, scroll up and go to low latency mode. This is different than the reflex low latency in game. And because it's different, you want to turn it off. Final thing you want to do on top of what I just showed as well as NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency on plus boost is go to your graphics quality settings and turn textures to high. I know it sounds weird, just do it. Trust Papa Jarian. These combinations of settings will get you no input delay. It is quite literally the best combination of settings in the game. Here's why. Why you put the power management mode to prefer maximum performance is that this allows the on plus boost setting to do its magic. The prefer maximum performance mode overrides the power power savings features in the GPU and allows the GPU to always run at higher clocks. They also say that this mode is designed for gamers who want to squeeze every last microsecond of latency out of the pipeline regardless of power. We are those nerdneck gamers. After that, why you turned NVIDIA low latency mode off in the control panel is that the reflex on plus boost mode actually overrides the low latency mode you have there, meaning you could technically leave it on if you want, but it won't do anything since again, the in-game reflex low latency is the only thing your game cares about. Lastly, the reason you turn your textures to high is to try to make your game GPU bound. With the new reflex low latency mode, you do not have to turn your settings all the way down like I usually recommend. You'll get better FPS and lower latency on higher settings than you would having stuff like your textures on low or off. Pretty darn crazy, right? Once you have all of these settings in place, I'm telling you, your game is going to feel amazing. I almost didn't believe it at first because I thought, why the heck would I ever put my textures on high? How could making your graphics card do 
do more work be better for your input delay. However, after reading through all the nerdy explanations and actually understanding it, I can definitely say it is the way to go. Oh, and before I forget, one of my friends did this trick and he got an extra 80 FPS, so it is not a joke. Moving on, the third setting we have to talk about is latency flash. The way this works is that anytime you click your left mouse button, a white box will appear to basically help the game measure your latency. This setting to me is very similar to the latency markers, where I do not recommend turning it on as you play, but I do think it's helpful when testing out new settings. The final advanced graphics setting, which I actually don't have, is DLSS. DLSS is only for RTX users, aka people with 20 series or above. I do not have one, I have a 1070 Ti so F in the comments for me. DLSS is an acronym that stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling. What it does, according to Epic, is it uses deep learning to render highly detailed images using fewer pixels, boosting your frame rate so you can maximize your graphic settings and output resolution. For the in-game Fortnite DLSS, you have a total of four different options. Off, Performance, Balanced, and Quality. Each setting will actually reduce your 3D resolution, supposedly in a way you won't really notice, thus getting you a performance boost without sacrificing that much quality. You can toy around with them yourselves, but the quality option will reduce your 3D res to 66%, balance goes down to 57%, and performance, as you may guess, is the lowest with 50%. You may also notice that when you enable any of these, your anti-aliasing gets grayed out. I believe this is because the game controls it as their own, and as a result, your game looks a lot blurrier than normal. Shout out to CruxJT for that footage. Now, after looking at all the benchmarks on Twitter from all the PC tweakers, most people either got the same FPS with DLSS off as with on, or they just got better FPS with DLSS off. So until Nvidia fixes it because that is not how it should work, I would recommend leaving it off. To finish up the video, let's talk about Ray Tracing. Ray Tracing is the new section at the bottom that I'm pretty sure everyone can see regardless of their graphics card. The only way to enable it is to use DX12, and Epic actually recommends that you use at least an RTX 2080, which is really expensive, for the best results. I won't get into the nitty gritty of what Ray Tracing is, it's kind of self-explanatory. All you need to know is that it makes your game look really nice and really realistic. There's an option for shadows, reflections, ambient occlusion, and global illumination. In my expert opinion, you do not want ray tracing on. Ray tracing will absolutely demolish your FPS no matter how good your PC is. I was watching Booga use it on two PCs, one with the new 3080, and no joke, he was getting around 60 FPS in a normal public match. Trust me, I get that his game looked really really sick. He was showing off stuff like the reflections and the water and it looked amazing. However, unless you want to play on 60 FPS, turn ray tracing completely off. Overall guys, those are all the new NVIDIA settings that are new in Chapter 2 Season 4. Hopefully you learned a lot, and hopefully they do improve your FPS as well as your input delay. On top of that, if you enjoyed the video or learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel somewhere down here, and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone using code Jerrion, I love each and every one of you. I promised I would not say it, but I have to say it one more time. My code is Jerrion, it is not it's Jerrion. Use code Jerrion. Otherwise, that's it for me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.